There was one last important stage to the creation of the New Testament Canaan, which was the end result of the dialectical process of authoritative use on the one hand, and the redefining efforts of heretics on the other. That stage involved the making of lists which were meant to be officially recognized by the Church at large. The first person to refer to something called the New Testament was this fellow, Origen. He lived from about 185 to 250 AD. Origen's New Testament collection consisted of the four Gospels, 13 letters of Paul, and Revelation. He also comments on several works that were on the fringe of acceptance as authoritative, in a way that shows they were being critically evaluated for authenticity. Of 2 Timothy, for example, he writes, Some have dared to reject this epistle, but they were not able. Of Peter's epistles, he notes that one is acknowledged, and possibly a second, but this is disputed. To John, he attributes one gospel and one epistle, and, as it may be, a second and third, but not all consider these to be genuine. Of James, he implies some doubt as to its authenticity, but does accept the genuineness of Jude. He also mentions two books outside our current New Testament, The Shepherd of Hermas, which he calls divinely inspired, and the preaching of Peter, which he rejects because it was not composed by Peter and was not inspired by the Spirit of God. What's important to note here is that Origen doesn't tell people to burn or get rid of the heretical Gospels, as some critics imply would be the case. Instead, he expresses admirable tolerance for them, even as he rejects their authenticity. That he doesn't viciously attack them indicates that the presence of false Gospels was an accepted fact, but one easily dealt with, not requiring any sort of political war to get rid of them, or the views they expressed. This would also suggest that the false gospels were so poorly grounded in reality that they had to struggle to survive. And frankly, you only have to read some of them to get an idea why. Several close contemporaries of origin wrote similar sentiments, although none used the formal term New Testament. To be sure, lists like the one made at Hippo and Carthage didn't end all possible controversy. Over church history, various persons or groups have argued for inclusion of some favored book or books, or the exclusion of others. We also have some denominations with what could be called a Deuterocanon, books that are considered of less value than the canonical books, but are still important. Even so, that core of 27 has, as a whole, remained stable throughout the broad sweep of Christendom. In the final analysis, it's the burden of critics to argue, on the basis of individual books, why the Church's criteria or selection is an error. And if you want to argue the point, you'll have to do a lot better than, um... Hey, what about those songs by Elvis, huh? See you next time.